Now that we have the key poses, we can start working on the actual motion. So now we want to enable our interpolation. To do this, I will select all of my controls and then select all of the available keyframes and press T and choose Bezier. And then let's see what happens. Um, there will be problems, but don't worry, we'll fix them right away. <laughs> so, um, as you see, first the legs sink through the ground and then something really crazy happens. Uh, and then uh, at the end, it's kind of okay, actually. Um, so these main problems uh, come from the fact that our IKFK switch is now in Bezier mode, which means that it kind of switches gradually, uh, which we didn't want. So to fix this, I'm going to select my gear icons. As I said in the beginning, this is where the uh, keyframes for the IKFK switch live. So we need to select them in order to uh, get the exact keyframes that we want. So now I want to select all of these keyframes and switch them back to constant mode. So everything else we want in Bezier, but just the IKFK switch, I want to stay in constant mode. Okay, and now if I play again, This is much more reasonable. Uh, we still have some animation problems that we can fix, but the initial weirdness that we saw is mostly fixed. So now we can start going through the animation, noticing little problems and trying to fix them. So here I can see that uh, when the character jumps, the legs really switch position quite suddenly. Uh, so let's see what this is about. So this is where the IK to FK switch happens. So I probably adjusted the torso in this pose and now the FK legs are misaligned. So I just need to select the legs and snap the FK to the IK. And now we won't have this uh, problem. Uh, and I see something else that the legs are kind of sliding. And that is because I first uh, set some keyframes for the this initial part of the animation at the end, I wanted to move the IK legs at another position. And now that we switch to Bezier mode, uh, the IK legs kind of keep moving throughout this whole period of time. So I need to make sure that they're stationary uh, between these two keyframes. So I'm going to select both, both IK controls, select this keyframe, shift D and duplicate it to frame 23. And now that we have the position correctly, uh, we have to again snap the FK. And that should do it. Here is a little problem with the toes, but I'm going to fix it later when I'm focusing on smaller details in the animation. And also the IK legs will kind of keep moving during this uh, period. So what we can do is select these two keyframes between this period and press T and switch them to constant. So now the legs will stay in place and then they will switch to the other position at this keyframe. And the same, and we should do the same for the heels. Okay. So one more thing that we could fix is this uh, sudden snapping of the knees. You can see here in just two keyframes, the knees go from bent to super overextended. So there are many ways to fix this, but we could add a breakdown um, keyframe. So I'm going to select the torso, maybe go to frame 22 and then I can press shift E and move the slider to 90 or so. And that will create a smoother motion. What we added on frame 22 is basically a breakdown keyframe and we use the breakdowner tool. Again, you can use it with shift E or you can go to in-betweens and pose breakdowner. So now this initial phase is kind of okay, so let's keep going. Here 
Here I can see that the FK arms are not really snapped at the position of the IK at this, um, at this key pose. So I'm going to select each of them and snap them. So that should make this transition smoother. Uh, here is another problem that we are going to fix later. That is not how you grab a bar unless you're a ghost, but we'll come to this later. This is looking mostly okay, but we can improve it. So at this point, we want to create more of a circular motion for the swing. At this point, the character is kind of pulling herself up using strength. So, so here, uh, having linear motion is kind of fine. And let's actually visualize our motion so that we know what we are doing. This is a very important technique in animation. So I'm going to select the torso and, and I can go to pose, motion paths, calculate. Or here in the armature tab, there are motion paths. And here we have calculate and update all paths. So I'll right click on them and add them to my favorites. Okay, now I can calculate my motion path here. I'll press Q, calculate, and I want to calculate from 44 to around, let's say, 110. Okay, so here I have the character swinging up. And here there is a nice arc to the motion. Uh, this is fine in my opinion. But then when she swings back, I think an even more pronounced arc uh, will look better. So I can go here around the uh, middle of the motion and I can just move the body slightly down. And that automatically recalculates the, the path for me. If it didn't, I can go to update all paths. Okay, so that's looking nice. And we can do the same for the other part of the animation. So again, around the middle. I'm going to move the torso a little bit and try to get a nice smooth path that resembles part of a circle. And yeah, I think that looks better. Something looks off where the character releases the bar. The motion looks weak, like it lacks the energy that is needed for this action. So let's um, so let's compare it to our reference. So around here, before the character releases the bar, I can see that the pose that we have in the reference is much stronger, much more uh, extreme than, than what we have here. So let's create another pose, uh, a breakdown probably. So the character seems to be a little bit higher. The arms are extended. And the legs are bent. And then we may want to tweak our original keyframe uh, to include a little bit more momentum. And then during the fall, we can see that uh, the legs are extended rather than uh, the bent legs that we have here. Yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. So here at the landing, again, we have to make sure that the FK is properly snapped to the IK.
And with that, I think we've fixed most of the large scale issues in the animation. And in the next step, we can focus on some finer details. Okay, let's go through the animation frame by frame and try to notice problems that we can fix. So here, um, right where the character leaves the ground, if I go to frame 23 in my case, I can see the toes penetrating the ground. So this is because of the switch between IK and FK. Basically the toes are treated a little bit differently in the two modes. So I'll go to frame 23 and create the toe pose. And now if I go to the previous frame, the toes will be curled uh, at the beginning. So I have to go to frame 22 to the frame before the actual key pose and I'll rotate the toes back into place. So now we don't have the ground penetration anymore, but then the character keeps these curled toes. So one or two frames after the jump, let's bring those toes back into the stretch position. And I think that's fine. Okay, let's keep going forward and try to find some problems. And here the way the character grabs the bar is completely impossible. And if I select the fingers, I've actually only set one keyframe for them. So first let's select them. And then I'll go to the previous pose, key pose, and then I'll press Alt S and Alt R to bring all of these widgets in the default position. And then we have something similar to grabbing, but the character curls the fingers way too early. So here at this frame, I'm going to press Shift E to get my breakdown tool and bring it to 10% or so. And now we have something that looks more like actually grabbing the bar, but it is too sudden. So I'm going to take this keyframe from the key pose and offset it by a frame or two. Okay, now we have something more natural. And by testing, I found out that you can offset these keyframes even more, something like this. Because of the momentum, you don't need to grab the bar with the fingers right away. And yeah, that is looking okay to me. And now there is something else about the fingers. As we go through the animation, uh, you'll see that they gradually start to look kind of weird. And that is because uh, the next keyframe is right here. And here I have actually brought the fingers to, the, to their default position. And so in this interval, they slowly unfold. Instead, we want them to be closed until this frame where the character actually releases the bar. So I'm going to select this keyframe, press Shift D and duplicate it over to frame 107. So here uh, there is a problem with releasing the bar as well, but let's uh, go through the other keyframes and see we if we can find something. Okay, there's nothing in particular. So let's try to improve this um, releasing of the bar. So here the character is way too far. Um, the hands are not actually on the bar. So that can mean a couple of things. Maybe, maybe we tweak some of the larger controls and now the FK is not aligned properly. So let's snap FK to IK. And that was the case, but even when we snap it, uh, we see that it's not quite there. So that means that I pushed the torso control too far. So I'll try to fix it by tweaking the curves. I'll expand this. And if I press Control and Tab in this area, I'll switch to uh, the curves view. And here with this setting, I'm isolating only the selected control. And now I want to focus only on the location controls or location curves. And the one I want for uh, this back and forth movement is the Y axis. So I'll only show Y location. 
And here, from this keyframe forward, I'm going to grab all of the keyframes and press G and then Y to move them slightly backwards. And then I'll snap the FK again. Okay, and now the arms are not overextending. The character keeps uh, grabbing the bar until the end. But the way she releases the bar is a little bit unnatural. So let's go back to the timeline, control and tab. And here again, I'll take a good look at the reference and try to recreate and try to recreate the position of the arms from the reference. So the arms are a little bit up as the character releases the bar and also the fingers are already extended. So let's select all of them, Alt S, Alt R. Maybe I'll give them a little bit of a curve. Okay, so now the character actually releases the bar, but the fingers go through the bar. So let's see what we can do. I'm going to select all of the all of the arm and hand widgets, and let's move this keyframe one frame back. And here, let's try to establish a po a another pose, something like this, and then. The hands are, will be moving up a bit. Yeah, that looks okay. And something else that we could do is select all fingers again. And instead of the character holding until the very last moment, she could start releasing a couple of frames before she leaves the bar. So yeah, I think that looks natural enough.